Welcome home to Homespun, a weekly internet gathering of family, friends, and businesses from Platte County. Our purpose is to connect our community and showcase the colorful threads that run through our tapestry. Grab a warm cup of hometown goodness, sit back, put your feet up, and visit with us a while. I'm your host, Mark DeLapp, and I bring to you portions of interviews from some of our own. Welcome home, Platte County, to Homespun. All right, we are here today with Malcolm, and can you spell your last name for me, Malcolm? Irvin, E-R-V-I-N. E-R-V-I-N. Yep. Okay, like Irvin Magic Johnson. That's right. <laughs> yep. So, uh, what's going on with Platte County? You're the, the clerk here, correct? I am. Um, we're business as usual with Platte County. Okay. Um, physically, we've restricted a couple of things just to limit the number of people who come into offices. Right. Um, but really, we have not seen our business curtail any. Okay. Um, we're still titling vehicles, getting plates for them. Um, land records are still open for review. We do have appointments set for land records, so just to limit the number of people who come in and try to maximize our space sure. between people. But things here, it's an odd time of year. It's um, an election year, and I. It's odd that I think a majority of the work for an election comes in March, April, and May. For an election, it doesn't happen until August and November. Um, it's budget time in a year that there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to budget. So Especially it, now with the coronavirus. That's exactly right. So, you know, your office is not really being affected as far as the coronavirus itself, as far as people coming in and going out. But it is going to be affected as far as budgets go. Um, what's uh, what's going to be different about the the budgeting here? Um, we've already noticed a small dip in sales tax. Uh, we had our lowest collection in March that we've had in two years, and um, the state of Wyoming believes that trend will continue. The governor told us to expect a significant reduction. The word "significant" bothers me, um, but he. He told us to be prepared for a significant reduction in sales tax and distribution from the state. Um, with oil prices going negative, um, the state of Wyoming feels it. And a lot of our funding comes directly from the state of Wyoming. And so if they're hurt, we're hurt. Okay. So it, it'll be an odd year. I think we'll see revenues down. And Platte County's always done a fantastic job of budgeting conservatively. Um, and this year will be no different. It'll probably be the most conservative budget proposed. Just because there's so much uncertainty. Sure. But hopefully we're all wrong and things come back and boom. Right. Um, but being conservative, you have to be a little bit pessimistic that um, the economy will open as strong as it once was. Um, I think we'll get back there. It just may be some time. So this fiscal year, I need to be very careful in what I propose. Sure. Well, you know the trickle-down is going to be affecting everybody, and it's going to be affecting everybody in a lot of different areas. We, um, you know, we're getting reports out of the Midwest and even out of some of the, some of the um, beef-producing plants that they're having to put down animals because they don't have enough workers to take care of that. And so here we are in a country that uh, sometimes scrambles to feed people like the homeless and everything else, and we're going to start putting down you know, literally millions of anim animals because we can't have anybody that's that's there to process them. That's going to drive our uh, economy crazy as far as our costs. Uh, costs are going to go up in a lot of different areas. Um, how's that going to affect us here? Um, I think the nice part about being a rural state is you're somewhat isolated. And I think the state of Wyoming has been um, progressive when it comes to the meat market. Now you can buy locally. It still has to be from a certified... Um, uh, slaughterhouse, but at least now we can buy from people in our surrounding area. Um, there's a number of families in Platte County who are selling locally raised meat, and so I think if anything, 
that may benefit places like Platte County. Sure. Where we've got a strong ag industry. We've got dedicated people who have the workforce. They've just never had the market, and mm -hmm. now they have the market. So I think that um, I don't think Platte County will be negatively impact, impacted. I think actually you can see Platte County become positively impacted. So it might work opposite for us. Um, I'm in. Uh, I'm doing a story right now with and working with the people from the Food Coalition here, which is um, getting trying to get people to use our local producers, our small and medium range producers. Um, there's two vistas that are that are working on that right now. In fact, we're going to do a, a story with the dean of uh, School of Agriculture um, from the U UW um, next week, and we're going to go to Laramie to to catch that story. But um, I just did a story of um, the Western Harvest on the Food Coalition. Um, I never thought about that until you said that, but we may actually benefit um, and have to go in-house, in-state, keep our dollars here. Um, can you see any other uh, advantages to this? You know, actually our treasurer and I have talked about this quite a bit, that I think what we'll see are more of an isolated approach when it comes to shopping. I think what you'll see are folks focusing more on um, shopping locally, hopefully, and keeping their dollar in Platte County One. Those are the people who support your baseball team, your football team, wrestling program. Um, they're the ones who employ your friend, your spouse, and so I think you'll see a community like this that is tight-knit want to protect them. And so I think that'll be their way of protecting. But I think you'll see some isolation. You would, don't want to go to more populated areas. More populated areas are where we're seeing um, these sorts of pandemics um, boom. But right. places, rural places like this, they don't. So I think you'll see people stay a little bit closer when it comes to um, shopping, hopefully. Right. But I think this obviously... Nobody would ever have wished this, but I think in the very end, Platte County is well positioned to come out stronger. There's a program called Wild Fresh. Leroy Johns, out of the Extension Office, really heads it up. He um, he's been pushing for sourcing local, locally grown uh, vegetables and fruits for a long time. Right. And so I think you'll see programs like that gain in popularity. The local meat market and our local retailers. I think you'll see them. Be a little bit better protected now. Sure. Um, the the thing that I'm I'm seeing here too is we've have we have a community that's really pulling together as far as supporting the local the local establishments like the restaurants that are that are shut down right now. Um, a lot of people driving through, um, still supporting these restaurants to keep them open. And I think I think it was Gina uh, Vineyard who said, you know, we we want to make sure that these businesses are still around after the after the uh, coronavirus is is dwindling um, we hear we not we now start to hear some kind of adverse reports from people who are saying that they're expecting a second round of corona um, I don't know if you've heard that or not oh, yeah. um, this fall that's supposed to be even worse um, so if that happens again um, is it business as usual here um, I think it's business like you see it today uh, I don't know if we ever go back to usual or normal. Um, the human race is incredible because it's incredibly adaptive. Mm -hmm. And so it does whatever it takes to survive. And so I think we've done a very good job. And one reason we live here is it because it's rural and that's protected us against stuff like coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, it, will, it will get here. It will affect people we know. But I think that you nailed it. We pull together and we do what's right not just to keep people afloat, but do what's right to make sure that that spread is slowed down. Sure, um, sure. This community, I hope you've seen it so far, um, they do pull together when it really, really matters. Absolutely. And that's all five municipalities do it, and the unincorporated areas, all of them are so good about being there for one another. Absolutely. I think another thing that I find out about this community is, you know, some communities you come into and... You know, if you don't have a name on a tombstone in the cemetery, you just never feel like you're accepted or a part of the community. I don't see that here in Wheatland. Um, everybody has just literally opened their arms to me as, as somebody new to the community and really been welcoming um, to come in and to really be a part. Um, 
what's different about Wheatland that that we don't see in a lot of other uh, cliquish communities? Right, and, and we've been accused of it before. Wheatland has been, but I think that um, you really see a group that it's that Western heritage that you know, if you're going to survive, these are the people you got to do it with. Um, and it's not just Wheatland that's inclusive; it's all five towns in the county. Every one of them is so good about. Um, this is the community, and if you're here, you're a neighbor, we care about you. Mm-hmm. Um, I truly think that it's just that Western heritage that if you're here, they're, they're may not necessarily things. love someone, but you're still there to help them, support them, and make sure that they they go through it with you. Uh, it, it's a fantastic community, Platte County is. Yeah, you kind of feel like you're never alone here. Um, okay, now, as far as your office goes and as far as uh, uh, Malcolm goes, uh, what do you do here in Platte County? Um, what do we do for business or for enjoyment? Well, what do you do here? Uh, what, what is your job description here as a clerk? Uh, so the clerk, it's, it's interesting. I think every time the state of Wyoming designs a new um, process, they say, well, the best person to give it to is the clerk. If you go through the statute book, um, there's a number of pages dedicated to what the clerk's office does. Uh, most notably, we conduct the election. I think that's our um, probably our most important role we play, but we only get to do it every couple of years. And so we conduct the election. We, um, most people will know us because we uh, get, we issue their vehicle title. We record um, all security agreements for vehicles. So when you buy a vehicle and you finance it, the information's here. We have, we're the safekeeper of that information. We're also the safekeeper for all property records from the beginning of time in Wyoming until today. Um, all the deeds, mortgages, they're all recorded here. Um, we set the budget, we recommend a budget to the commissioners once a year. Um, they're the ones who set it, but we're the chief budget officer in this office. Um, we issue marriage licenses. It, I'm telling you, all sorts of different areas. And the girls who work here are fantastic because, you know, they don't know just one area of it. They know all the areas. Mm-hmm. You go somewhere like Laramie County, Natrona County, they know... Um, they have people dedicated to titles, they have people dedicated to security agreements, not here. Our folks do it all. It's like you guys are cross-trained here for oh, yeah. a lot of different areas. Um, coming into a new community, if somebody was, was wanting to come into Wheatland, um, let's say um, vehicle licenses, license plates, how competitive are you guys compared to going to another state? I hear the uh, I hear that it's quite expensive coming in and getting plates on a vehicle. Yeah, you know, and plating is actually at the treasurer's office. They're sure. the ones who take in all the license plate, um, money and issue registration. We're just the ones who say you own it. Okay. So we're the friendly office. We charge you a little bit to show that you own something. Um, but Wyoming registration is a little bit higher, absolutely. The trade-off is no state income tax. Okay. Uh, and so our property taxation rates compared to other states much lower no income tax um, but in order to build roads employee deputies we've got to make revenue somewhere and that's where the state of Wyoming has done it um, this through vehicle fees and those fees are set by state statute sure so sure. counties don't have the ability to say um, we'll be lower than our neighboring county to try to get more business right um, it's set across the board and so Wyoming is a little bit higher with registration, but the trade-off is you get to live in a better state. Um, mm-hmm. You you don't pay as much in property tax and no in state income tax. So there's a lot of benefit to and and Laura, I think more. as of yesterday, well, as as of two days ago, we were the number one state in the nation for the least amount of coronavirus. Um, and of course, here in Platte County, we still don't have a positive. Mm-hmm. I think we're only one of two counties. Um, I think it's Weston County up, yep. up north that's, that doesn't have any either. Um, what, how, do you, how do you account for that, that we don't have no virus here? Is it, is it the amount of radiation we have in the water, like, <laughs> like I've heard it uh, said by con, uh, the conspiracy theorists around here? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the folks at the town of Wheatland would hate me if I said that. Uh, I don't <laughs> think that's the case. There, I think there's so many variables. Yeah. Um, it probably has passed through here. Somebody we know probably has had a positive case of coronavirus, but they've recovered. 
or they showed mild symptoms. Um, so to say that we have no coronavirus here, I think we'd be remiss in saying that. Sure. But I think that we've got a tough community that um, they're, they're very selfless. Um, if they're a little bit sick or even mildly sick, they're not ones to go seek care because they know that somebody out there needs it more. Right. And so that's what I attribute. And Weston's a lot the same. Um, call it stubborn, if you will. Um, we're just not willing to admit that we're hurt. So I think that that may be a part of it, that somebody out here probably has had it, but they're too stubborn to go and get it tested. <laughs> um, I know that we've tested in the county. Um, I think this morning the number was 55 people who'd been tested. Okay county-wide so it's being they're being tested sure we just um, we haven't had confirmation that it's here correct um, as far as uh, who Malcolm is where were you uh, born and raised Malcolm I was actually born in st. Louis Missouri so that's why you'll see all the Cardinal stuff around this office oh okay uh, so avid Cardinal fan blues fan for hockey um, so you don't get along with the Chicago fans too well oh, no. I, one of um, the folks who works in this office is a big Cubs fan so Oh yeah, that Cubs Cubs Cardinals rivalry is is huge. There's a little bit of trash talk. Sadly, we can't really do it right now because there's nothing to trash talk. Neither team gets to play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, um, my family's actually been here. Fifth generation Platte County resident. Okay. So my mom's side of the family's been here um, for five generations now. Um, my dad's side, they came out when the power plant was being built. So they've been out here since the 70s. Um, we moved back out here when I was three years old, so I've lived in Platte County ever since. I took a short hiatus to go to the University of Wyoming, and then um, I think everybody who grows up in a small town feels like they've got to get out at some point, so I did. I went to Denver for about 18 months and realized this is where you want to be, so I made the decision to come back. I think that's the right way to do it rather than just stay. Um, I've made the conscious decision to come back. Sure. So it's my choice to be here. I don't right. feel trapped here. This is where I want to be. That's why I ran for this position, was to make sure that um, if I'm going to be here, I'm going to try to make the most positive change I can and positive influence throughout the county. Um, because I've got family from Glendo, Guernsey, Wheatland, Chugwater, Hartville. So um, my family lives here. My friends live here. I want to make sure that this is a place they want to live. Born to the breed here in Wheatland, Wyoming, I know what it's like to uh, grow up in a small town in Wisconsin and um, and then go off to see the world, so to speak, um, which it sounds like what you did too. I mean, I went to the University of Wisconsin and then uh, worked in Chicago and Los Angeles and Minneapolis. And um, I, I can tell you, if I had to spend another four and a half hours in a traffic jam in Chicago, <laughs> I probably would have... Um, uh, probably would have decided something serious, uh, seriously wrong happening in my life. But um, coming home to Wheatland, it's really like coming home. I mean, there's nothing like a small town. I and agree. Um, people say, "Well, why?" You know, they ask me. Well, you know, you 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 could write and you know if you had offers and to go to Dallas or to go to some of the bigger um, venues. And I've been to the bigger venues. Um, but you get to a point in your life, I think, where you just want to come home. You just want to come to that small town. Um, that embraces you and says, you know, you're a part of this community. And I think that's, I think that is, you know, coming out of Denver, even, you know what that's like coming from the large hub where there's a lot of culture and you, you know, you Thursday night, you'll get to go to the symphony and then on, a, on a, you know, the weekend, you'll get to go to watch the Broncos play and things like this. So, you know, we, we, we find, find that in the bigger city and uh, people say, well, geez, a small town, he said, and um, somebody said to me last night, I said, um, well, I'm really rural, and I said, you don't know what rural is <laughs> until you have to go 60 miles to Walmart, yep. but I thought to myself, you know what the advantage is? I have never, ever lived in a place where I could get in my car and drive 85 miles an hour to go to Walmart. Yep, It's absolutely. the only place that I've ever lived that I could do that. Yeah, absolutely, um, and the worst traffic we'll ever have here is if the train blocks one of the crossings, in town for a couple of minutes you may be delayed five minutes oh i know that's about as bad as it gets sure my daughter said in minneapolis the other day she goes daddy she says you're you're going to live in a small town again i said yeah and i said well how's your day going she goes oh dad that minneapolis traffic this morning i was stuck for six hours in a, in a traffic jam and a mm. couple wrecks and i said uh yeah i said it was rough for me this morning too i said i got stuck behind a tractor and i said i would 
took me almost three minutes to get to work. Yeah. She just looks, she just says, I hate you, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. There's a lot of benefits. I mean, yeah. You're, you're right. We may not have um, the culture, the number of things to do that you do in a big town, but um, in a county like this, there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. And um, and we still have each other. Right. So I never felt more alone in my entire life when I lived in Denver. Big city, and you just felt isolated. Here, um, I think it's just a big community and a, a very big family. I think I wrote that in my first column and answering questions to people of why the small community. And I thought to myself, I don't watch, watch that sun go down for the first time here in Wyoming over the mountain. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I mentioned the fact that I'd seen a lot of sunsets out in Los Angeles, and I can't remember one of them, but I'll remember the first one that I saw yeah. here in Wheatland. Absolutely. And uh, it's a it's just kind of an awesome thing to realize we have a mountain in our backyard, and uh, we have people that that we have here. Um, so you went to UW, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, came back home to Wheatland. Uh, what what's the future for Platte County, in your eyes, Malcolm? Uh, you you know what, Platte County really is unchanged, and I think that, that will continue. We're in, in pr primarily ag county. Um, we'll continue to farm, we'll continue to ranch. Um, it's highly unlikely we ever find minerals here, um, like coal, oil, or gas. It, but So I think we'll stay consistent, and I don't know if we want to change that. So I think the future, I do think Platte County will grow. We're seeing a number of people move into the county appreciating how rural it is, but um, I think we'll continue to be rural. Uh, I don't know if there's a whole lot of change coming down the, the interstate for this place, but um, I think that's the way we like it. Um, if there is change, we can only take it incrementally. Yeah. I don't know if we could take um, a big change all at once, but um, the future of Platte County is good. Um, right. If it stays much the same, we'll be happy. We'll keep the romance of the cowboy alive here. That's right. And, That's uh, right. And the idea that um, if you want to be a cowboy, come to Wheatland. Yeah. And yep. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's been talk. Um, don't know if you've heard this or not, but um, rumors of um, some feedlots coming in, more feedlots coming in. Uh, good or bad for the for the area? Um, I think you will see it with being able to sell locally sourced beef uh, or any locally sourced meat um, I think you'll see it become more prevalent um, I'm torn it it's obviously good for the economy if people come in and um, bring jobs um, so I don't know I think you're always going to find a positive you're always going to find a negative um, hold on one second more all right Malcolm it's been uh, just an honor talking to you and glad to come on into uh, the state of Wyoming and get you here hooked up on on our digital web based uh, show called Homespun Very cool. and uh, so those of you that are tuning in um, this is Malcolm Irvin right yep and um, the the county clerk here in Platte County and uh, we appreciate you taking time with us today and um, uh, we'll press on through this uh, virus or through anything else. And uh, again, we need to have a slogan. If you want to be a cowboy, come to Wheatland. That's right. I, uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for thinking of me. Yeah, you bet. I don't, I don't deserve it, but I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, so thanks. Thank you. All right.